You know where we stopped last week, Sunday? The, the message is the signature and the seal of our salvation. Signature and the seal of our salvation. This is going to be part six, I believe. And I want to say it over and over again, and I want you to take notice of it. That Jesus Christ is the only one, is the signature and is, is the seal of our salvation. The signature and seal of our salvation. The Bible says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. He had finished everything that has to do with our faith. We cannot add anything to our salvation, neither can we take anything from it. Jesus has concluded everything, and he said it is finished. Remember what I told us in other parts. Church will not save you. Your church will not save you. No amount of religious commitment can hand you eternal life. No amount of work of righteousness can hand you eternal life. The only one who can save us, the, lo the only one who can help us to get into heaven is Jesus Christ. And it's by grace. Jesus is the grace. That is the message that we have. The Bible recorded in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 to 9, Ephesians 2, verse 8 to 9. It says, For by grace you have been saved, through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. If you will not remember anything in this message, the signature and seal of our salvation, you will remember this statement. No church can save you. No creed can save you. No religious commitment can save anyone. Only your acceptance of Christ as personal Lord and Savior can save you. Your salvation is made possible by Christ's death on the cross of Calvary. His resurrection sealed the deal permanently. So the deal is what? Sealed permanently. All you have to do is to believe. You know, the Bible recorded in John 1, 17 that for the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. So the approach of man to God is by law. So we think that we can do this, we can do sacrifice, we can do that, and we keep doing this all the time. But these sacrifices, all these works are not sufficient. The Bible recorded that our righteousness all put together is just like a filthy rag. Remember we have these enemies, three enemies. We have sin, death, and hell. The most important of these enemies, sin and death, no one can take care of this. In fact, sin is, an, is a disease, an ailment that is terminal. The Bible says any soul that sins must what? Must die. So sin is terminal. If any man is born of a woman, that person, the destiny of that person is to die at the end of the day. Because already that one is a sinner. Anyone born of a woman is a sinner. And that sin is an ailment. It's a disease that is terminal. So the only way to get us rescued back is through Jesus Christ. But then we think by law we can do it. We try as much as possible. We walk with... And this righteousness, of, this work of righteousness cannot amount to anything before God. And God said, this is not acceptable to me. And so, the Bible recorded that now through Jesus Christ, for the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Romans 3.20 says, therefore by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. So, if we continue to do the work of righteousness, we continue to do the work of the law, we get more and more exposed to sin. And sin is terminal. It got to be cured. If you continue to bear this burden of sin, and you fail to bring all this body before Christ, at the end of the day, when we die, not physical death per se, eternal death, total separation between man and God, I want to thank God for Jesus Christ for coming into our life to offer himself in our place. And that is why right now it's by grace alone. So the message that we have is by grace. Christ redeemed us. Christ will be with us. At the end of life, 
Christ will take us home to be with him. We have been redeemed by Christ. Knowledge is power. Take notice and ensure you understand this knowledge. It is power. Your salvation is by grace. Let us approach God from the heights of grace. If you approach God from the eyes of the law, you will fail all the time because law is not going to help you. No amount of what you do by law can grant you eternal rest with God. Brethren, one thing I want you to remember all the time is this. If you talk to somebody or you preach to somebody about Christ, all that person needs to do is to believe is to believe the work that Jesus did on the cross. He has been the signature. He signed our salvation. Everything is done deal. He sealed everything by his resurrection on the third day. All we have to do to come back home to God by grace is to believe. To believe. You remember Nicodemus, that's Jewish scholar, the ruler among the Jews. So he came to Jesus by night, being very important person, he can't come by day. So he came in the night to ask Jesus what he can do to enter the kingdom of God, to see the kingdom. And Jesus explained everything to him. I want to this. So let's go to John chapter 3, verse 16 to 18. Jesus said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Tell him the that the only way you can come back to God to be saved is to come through his son. That will help you to be born again. Because a certain man, born, a certain man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So, verse 17 says, For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So, the reason why Christ came to this life is just that we might be saved through his work on the cross of Calvary. The only way back home he said, I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. So he explained this to the Kodemos. But look at verse 18. He said, he who believes in him is not condemned. So all we have to do is to do what? To believe in Christ. But he, but he who does not believe in, is, is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. The signature and seal of our salvation. No one is going to go to hell one of our dangerous enemies is hell. No one is going to go to hell because of his or her sins. No matter what we have done, however wicked that it might be, even if it is murder, you are not going to go to hell because of that. The only sin that cannot be forgotten, that God cannot forgive, is the sin of not accepting the offer Jesus placed on the cross of Calvary. What will make somebody to go to hell is if somebody refused, rejected to take the offer Jesus gave on the cross of Calvary. That is the reason anybody is going to go to hell. Because every sin has been paid for. Even sins that have not been committed, Jesus paid for everything. So the only thing for anyone, the only reason for anyone to go to hell is if that, if that one refused to accept or refused to take what Christ has offered on the cross of Calvary. All you have to do is to believe in what Christ offered us by his redemptive works on the cross. I ask you a question. Let's do something now. What does it mean to believe? What does it mean to believe? I want to explain this and go through some of those benefits that we have started to explain in all the other parts and then we we'll conclude. What does it mean to believe? Because the word believe seems to be very simple. It's not as simple as you may think. The word believe is not believing that four plus two is equal to six. That is not that kind of the meaning of the word believe. So I want to put I want to read to you what I put down here. What is the meaning of the word believe? Believe means pricing, loving, a joyful treasuring of Jesus and all that God is for us in him. 
that you treasure all that God had done through him. You accept, you embrace, you love all that God has done through him, in him, for us. That is what we may believe. It is far more than intellectual agreement with the truth of the gospel. Far more than intellectual agreement, intellectual thinking, a memorandum of understanding. Far more than that. It is not just mental assent or intellectual confession. Saying, I confess Christ. It is more than that. Believe. It means trusting. You trust. Treasuring Jesus above all else. You trust Jesus with your life. I mean, you treasure Jesus more than anything else. More than anything else. Investing one's hope, not on anything you have done or promised to do, but all together in what God has done for us through Christ and in Jesus Christ. That is what we mean by believe. Now I cannot say, if you understand that belief now, if you understand that belief critically, now I cannot say, oh, I believe so I can do anything that I like. So I believe I can handle my material things as I like. I can live my life as I like. People that we do that and say, because I believe anything can go, anything else go. So, you know, I believe Christ. So I can do whatever thing I will still get to the kingdom of God. That is where people got a problem. It's not going to be. So James explained, James 2, 14 says, What does it profit, my brethren? If someone says he has faith but does not have works, can faith save that person? No. This is where works comes in. If actually you believe Christ, you treasure what God did through him for us, you trust in that thing, you will be totally poor out for the Lord. You'll be totally poor out. I'm not going to be compelling you to do this for the Lord. You will... I mean, the necessity will be laid on you to live your life, to be pleasing unto God, if you actually believe. You cannot tell me, I believe, and you are so complacent, you are so cold. You cannot tell me, I believe, then you continue the life of sin that you were in before you gave your life to Jesus Christ. i tell you something. Maybe in the, maybe in the full shop, we'll handle series on things, the fundamental things that make people to, to wreck their boat in life. Either in political power, either in, uh, in, in, uh, in religious power, either in the family, power, money, and sex. So it is these three things, if actually you believe in Christ, you'll be able to control and live your life above these three things that can wreck anybody. Can wreck anybody. Power, money, and sex. If any family crush is on these three things, power, money, and sex. If any politician crush power, money, and sex. If any pastor collapse, cross, power, money, and sex. And these are the things that wreck people's life. But now if you believe in Christ, the Bible says, if any man be in Christ, all things must pass away, be all things must be new. You'll be totally, genuinely poured out for the Lord. You will live your life. You know that it's no longer you that lives, but Christ that lives in you. Now, it's not going to be hard for me to preach the word. It's not going to be hard for me to tell you those things that God wants you to do. And it's not going to be hard for you to embrace all those things. And then the, the topic or the argument on hey, my money, my tithe, my this that people are talking about, you know, talking about, will not be an issue. Because you will give everything for the Lord. You know that you do not have anything except it's being given to you by God. And then if God has given these things to you, will you withhold anything from the Lord? No. If you belong to Christ, you want to appreciate what he has done. You want to live your life to thank him because you know that it's not by your work of righteousness, but by his grace alone that you are complete in Christ. You know that the life that you are living is even not yours. He can take it any time. Praise the Lord. So James said, if you have truly believed in Christ, this is what, I'm, this is what I put out about what James said in that James chapter 14 verse, uh, chapter 2 verse 14. Now what does it profit, my brethren, if someone says he has faith, but does not have works? Can faith save him? So if you continue to talk around there, I have faith, I'm a, I'm a Christian. The pastor said that I just have to believe. I can even keep, keep my time. 
I can keep my treasures. I can keep my talent. I will still get to heaven. Okay. But let me tell you, if we make it there, you, you get there by passing through fire. Everything will be burned. You look back to your life, you will regret. If you live your life outside the purpose of God, you will look back at the end of life. At the end of life, if you live your life outside God's purpose, outside God's will for your life, you look back at the end of days of your at, at the end of your life, you will discover that all this garbage is vanity. That I don't know I will have done better. Knowledge is power. Just understand what we are talking about. Coming to the church is good, but let church be in you. Let Christ be in you. Don't just pass through. Be consumed. Be sold out for the Lord. Be engaged for the Lord. James was saying, I put it down. James said, if you have truly believed in Christ by faith in your heart, you will produce the fruit of righteousness. If you actually believe. Because all you, all you have to do is to believe. For you to be raptured when Christ comes is to believe. You don't have to do anything. When Christ comes to take us home, if you are a believer, you believe in Christ, you will be raptured. Nothing else you have to do. That magnet is belief is in you. You will produce the fruit of righteousness. You will display work of obedience. You will be obedient to God. You are not going to have an attitude of saying, since I have believed in Christ, I can do whatever I like with my life. I can continue in my lifestyle of sin. No, you will determine to live a transformed life and obedience in all the things of God, not in perfection per se, not in, not in uh, you know, uh, earlier than thou attitude per se, but real clear demonstration of physical, verbal, total progressive change on how you live your life. For if any man be in Christ, a new creature. Everything will be, will be clear, you will understand. You don't, you're not going to be doing, oh, is pastor here? Don't let me do this now. Oh, that brother can see me? No. What you cannot do in the secret, you will not do it in the open. You will live a life that will be pleasing to God, knowing fully aware that God sees you anywhere you may be. Believe. That's what it means to believe. You totally trust in God atonement on the cross of Calvary for us through his son. You totally trust in God that your life is in his hands that he will take care of you. You totally trust in God that come what may, your life will be good in his sight. You know, we have seen some of those benefits. We sought salvation. One of the first benefits we have through his death on the cross of Calvary and his resurrection. Just believe you are saved. If you just believe in what he has done, you are saved. Then we, we have seen relationship and fellowship restored. I told you that our relationship with Christ or with God on, in, uh, in the past that we lost in the garden is restored because of his death of his son on the cross of Calvary. The fellowship is also restored. We also saw the heirs that will become the heirs of the father. We become joint heir with the son. We are now the children of the kingdom that we have seen inheritance. But another thing is that when you give your life to Christ, one of the dividends, one of the resultant effect of accepting Christ, believing what he has done, is that we become the help of God's eyes. You are so loved by God. I mean, God will take care of you as, we, as a normal parent. We always think of how it could be more better for, for his or our children. I mean, a father will always like to make you, you know, you, you want your, if you are crawling, you want your children to walk. If you are walking, per se, you want your children to run. If you are running, you want them to fly. If you are flying, you want them to cruise. You think of good things for your children. As a mother, you think of better things for your children. You can go hungry so that your children will eat, right? So, any, when you now come back to give your life to Christ, if the earthly fathers or earthly parents, if they know how to give to their children uh, food, uh, you know, this bread, butter, fish, don't you think that our heavenly father will be able to give us better things? So when you now believe in God, you are now special. You are not ordinary. You become the apple of his eyes. He will love you. You will enjoy the joy of God. You have a peace. Peace like a river will flow in your heart. These are the things we enjoy when you are a Christian. There will be a peace you cannot understand. You cannot even explain. It's a mystery. There's a rest that we have. People can build wall, but they cannot say sand wave will not pass through. 
in your, in your destiny, people can try to build world around you to say you are not going to make it. But when people build world, they cannot stop sound wave. They can, they can create obstacles for you, but because you are now special in the hands of God, no one can change your destiny. No one can derail your life. Your life is now in the hands of God, and it will take care of you. Amen. You are not going to be living a life of struggling. He knows what you need. In fact, he will grant rest for you, no matter where you may be, either in plenty or in scarcity. You know that God is in your side. And when God is on your side, no one can be against you. You're not going to be struggling, you know, trying to fight this, fight that, fight this, physically fight that, do this. No. You know, we wrestle not against flesh and against blood, but against principalities, against powers. Now you know that the weapons of your warfare, they are no longer carnal. They are mighty through God who did the work of our torment on the cross for us to the pulling down of any stronghold against your destiny, any stronghold against your life. Any struggle against God's purpose for your life. That's why a Christian is not ordinary. I'm telling you. A Christian is loaded. No, I'm telling you. Look, it's good to ask. The Bible says, ask shall be given unto you. Seek, you will find. Knock the door, the door will be open. For anyone who asks, we receive. Anyone who knocks the door, the door will be open. For anyone who asks, we get it. If you seek, you will find. But listen to me very carefully. Even before you ask, God knows what is the best thing for you. And he is preparing these things for you. There are things you may not know. There are things that may be secret. Just keep them secret. Like Deuteronomy 29, 29 says, keep them secret. These ones are secret. But those things that God will make known to you, they are yours. And those ones that he doesn't want you to know, I mean, those things he doesn't want you to know, leave those things as God wants you to leave them. Let me quickly explain the area of peace or, or, or rest. Then we go. John 15, 11 to 14 says, These things have I spoken to you, that my joy may remain in you, and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. So you will enjoy the love of God. You will enjoy the love. See, when you are a Christian, when you are born again, Something is going on in the inside of you that will be manifesting on the outside. You become the light of the world. There's, I mean, your life will become a, a, a great example for others to follow. First, that thing says, greater love has no man than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. You are my friends. If you do whatever I command you, now you become the friends, you, you become a friend of God. When you are not a Christian, you become what? A friend of God. Do you know what it means to be a friend of God? If you are a friend of the President of the United States, do you know what that means? If you are a friend of Buhari, do you know what it means? Do you understand what I'm talking about? That you can go to Asso Rock as you like. Or you can go to White House as you like. Even if you are just a friend of Governor of Illinois, Bruce Runner, do you know what it means? You know what it means to be a friend? Okay, let me say, you are a friend of mayor. You know what it means? I work in the city. If I'm going to mayor's office, I have to see police in front of his office. I have to explain to the, even with my ID, everything, I have to explain to the police. Uh, they ask you, what do you come to do here? They have to explain why I'm here. The next thing is, do you have an appointment? Because there are people that, will book, that you have to book an appointment with to see him. I can't just see him going on the street. I just, I just go and grab him, grab him like that. The police that are with him will rush me because they don't know the purpose. They don't know why I'm doing that. But if I'm his friend or one of his friends and I will be working together, if, I, if the police see me, say, oh, oh uh, yeah, he's inside, working. They allow me to go in straight. If you, you are afraid, that, these are human beings. They are there today. They will not, they will not be there tomorrow. But we are talking of God, the ancient of days. Who has been before you were born? Who has been before the world was laid? Who will be forever and ever? To be his friend. Say you are my friend. I want you to con con congratulate somebody. Congratulate so Just say you are blessed. <laughs> to be a friend of God, you are blessed. You are blessed. See, one, see do you know that 
Christ is not our peace. When you give your life to Christ, when you believe in the atonement work he did on the cross of Calvary, he automatically becomes your peace. It's our peace. Whatever you may be passing through, you have one assurance that God is enough for me. That God sees it. That at the end of the day, I will press in. That's what it means. It means, do you know what it is? It's not the peace. Let's see uh, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 14. Ephesians 2, verse 14. For in him, for he himself is our peace, who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of separation. You are no longer separated from God. I mean, it's our peace. We have fellowship now with God. We have peace. You, you, there's, a, there's a rest in your soul. Colossians 1 20. And by him, to reconcile all things to himself, by him, whatever things on earth or things in heaven, having made peace through the blood of his cross. Everything has been reconciled. You are no longer an enemy of God. You enjoy that rest, that peace. Let's go straight to Matthew. Matthew 11, from verse 28. It says, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my body is light. When anyone comes to Christ, do you know when people's hearts are disturbed? Do you know there are people that little things like this will disturb their heart? They will not be able to enjoy anything that, the, that life can offer. Now, Christ is saying, if you come unto me, you will find rest for your soul. Do you know what it means for your soul to be at rest? Then you'll be able to achieve anything you want to achieve in this life. That whatever you may be in, you know that your soul is at rest. And what is important in the life of man is the soul of man. And if your soul is at, is at, at rest, you are at rest. If your soul is not at rest, you are in trouble. You got money, it's nothing. You educated, it's nothing. You have family, it's nothing. Anything you have around you is nothing if your soul is not at rest. And Christ is saying, come unto me. Come unto me and learn from me. Come and carry my own body. Come and carry my you because it is very easy. What are you passing through? It's easy. That's what he's saying. It's not saying you're not going to have body. But he said, if you are in me, that body is what? It's easy. It's very light. It's, it's, it's easy. You cannot compare. Do you know people that are in the world without Christ? Do you know that their life is miserable? Do you know that if they die anytime, they have no hope of eternal rest? Do you know what it means for you to have hope that even if everything stops now, that you have a place of eternal rest with God? Do you know what that means? Money cannot buy it. Nothing can buy that. That your belief offer you so many things. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. John 14, 27 says, Peace I live with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. The peace I'm talking about, it's not the peace that this world can offer. It's not the peace. Jesus said, this peace I'm talking that I said I gave to you. This is a peace that Nothing in this world can exchange for that peace. It's not like the world will give to you and tomorrow they come and take it back from you. Once you believe in the atonement work of Christ on the cross of Calvary, the peace that has been given to you is permanent. It's permanent. It's permanent. The signature and seal of our salvation. Remember what I have told you. You just have to believe. And to believe in Christ is to totally trust him. You totally, you, you treasure all he has done on the cross. You totally depend, you live your life one day at a time, depending on what he had offered you, what he's going to offer you, what he's offering you right now. You totally rest on him, and you enjoy the peace of God that passes all human thinking, that passes all human understanding. And the Lord bless us in Jesus' name. Let not, our, let not allow our heart to be troubled. Let's know that Christ has done it all. The only one who can save us is Jesus Christ. And for you to have come to him, he will not cast you out. Shall we rise? Father, we thank you today. We bless you. If you are here today, you have not given your life to Christ. Think about Christ. It's very easy. Tell him that the work we have done on the cross of Calvary, I believe in this work. And I know that if I believe in this work, 
then I will have eternal rest with you if I leave this place. And begin to tell God that all that you have done in the past, that he should, he should forgive you, that you want to live a new life. And then begin to fellowship with him, begin to have a genuine relationship with him. Then you, you join together with the children of God, you study the scripture with a new life, and then you continue in the race. And then when all things will be brought on earth, you can reign with him. So think about Christ today. Pray that he will help you. Pray to the almighty God that his work on the cross through his son will not be in vain in your life. Blessed be your name, O God. Thank that we bless you worship this afternoon. We honor you because we are so wonderful. Thank you for the opportunity we have to know you as Lord and, and as Savior. Help us, oh Father, to pour out our life to you totally. Help us, Father, to be sold out for the cause in which Christ came to die for us on the cross. Thank you because you are so good to us. Thank you for being the, the, the signature and seal of our salvation. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord.